Hi, my name is Jean Atelsek, and I'm an analyst in the Cloud Transformation and Digital Economics Unit at 451 Research, which is now a division of S&P Global Market Intelligence. Joining me today is Vittorio Viarengo, the Vice President of Cross Cloud Solutions at VMware. Thanks for coming, Vittorio. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. So today we're going to be talking about multi-cloud and how businesses are finding themselves using multiple public clouds and the challenges and benefits that come from that diversity. At 451 Research, we found that 75% of businesses that we survey are using more than one public cloud provider. Are you seeing the same thing among your customers? Interestingly, we see exactly the same number. 75% of organizations use two or more clouds today, and that number is only gonna grow in the next few years. Uh, we uh, have uh, s uh, seen that that number is about to go to 85% by 2024. What are some of the challenges that uh, your customers are facing in terms of um, negotiating operations among uh, multiple uh, clouds? See, some customers um, have a multi-cloud as a strategy. M most of them uh, happen to have multi-clouds as an accident. Uh, I like to think about the, the, the five stages of multi-cloud adoption as, uh, you know, denial. Oh, we are an on-prem customer or we have standardized on AWS. Uh, then you have the euphoria. Oh, look at all these clouds and look how fast we go and look at the developers are happy. We're building all these applications. And then you have the shock. Oh, they get the first uh, bill and they realize they're spending a lot of money. Uh, and they're realizing they have multiple, uh, you know, environment to manage and things are complicated. And then finally you get to acceptance. Okay, you know, we got a problem. We need to figure out how to, to manage all this. And finally you have the new normal, which we believe that multi-cloud is the architecture for IT for the next foreseeable future. And IT needs to get uh, in front of it. And the main challenge that uh, we see customer facing is that every cloud brings its own silo with different development environment, different management environment, uh, different security stacks, and you know this um, heterogeneity creates uh, risk because it's hard to, and cost because you have to train your team across these multiple stacks, and so uh, we see customers that now are figuring out that they need to do something about it. You mentioned that some of your customers are actually pursuing multi-cloud as a strategic imperative, and I'm wondering, you know, obviously they see some benefits in uh, this um, pattern. I'm wondering. What are the benefits that they're getting? At the end of the day, I think IT is about supporting developers because developers build applications, application creates innovation and drive, that drives a business, right? And so initially, the advantage is like they're going faster. They can build application much faster uh, and, and get their ideas into the market faster and, and create growth. But think about the, the um, IT, uh, how IT would have coped with the pandemic without uh, the cloud. It would have been uh, impossible. So the, the second reason why uh, people get advantages out of the cloud, or multiple clouds, is that they can leverage the specific feature of each cloud. So you, somebody may go to Azure because they have SQL, a server type of workload. Somebody may go to Google because they have a, uh, AI requirements and they like their engine. Somebody goes to uh, Amazon for their development productivity, whatever it is. So uh, those, that's the second advantage. The third advantage is really the ability to not get locked in into a single cloud. So they want to spread their bets so that they, can, uh, they don't feel locked, up, locked in into one stack. I think one thing, as companies are moving to the cloud, one thing they're trying to avoid is sort of uh, repeating the mistakes and rebuilding the silos that they have in their on-premises environment. Um, and I'm wondering if there are ways that uh, you have seen that they're able to do that, um, you know, without sort of importing all of the problems uh, from their on-premises environment into their uh, cloud-based environment. I like to think that as you will become, we become smarter and smarter, I think history repeats itself. And IT always starts like there's a new stack, it looks great, and you adopt it, and then there's another stack. So over the years, IT always starts neat and then ends up very uh, heterogeneous in nature. And this is what VMware is famous for. Right? We have delivered a lot of value to our customers over the years by helping them manage complexity. And in multi-cloud, it's 
we are taking, a, we're leveraging our DNA and our strength, but we're taking a different approach. See, on-prem, we used our hypervisor to create the level of abstraction to simplify the RT architecture. And now all these different pieces of hardware and software and, 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 and uh, storage and networking, they all look like one because of the hypervisor and then the stack that we built on top of it. In the cloud, we need a different level of abstraction. We call that abstract, abstraction cross-cloud services. Basically, it's a way to uh, create a unified way to build, run, manage, connect, uh, and access applications across any cloud natively. So it's a new level of abstraction. Before it was the hypervisor, in the cloud is a level above with our VMware multi-cloud uh, sorry, cross-cloud services. So one thing that we're seeing, actually, speaking of uh, you know the hypervisor and sort of moving up uh, into the services level, we're finding that there are more multi-cloud applications coming out. So applications that are able to address uh, multiple public clouds. Yeah, that's exactly what we are we're doing with uh, our cross-cloud services, uh, and wherever possible, we are embracing the abstraction layer that already exists, like Kubernetes. Right? Every new application now is being built uh, around Kubernetes, whether it runs on a single um, platform uh, like Azure, or is a composition of multiple services coming from different um, uh, cloud providers. Uh, so, you know, embrace, we're embracing those existing standard or open source based level of abstraction, and then adding to it uh, with the capabilities like management. Like for example, uh, as I said earlier, initially you have the euphoria of like, oh, look at all these clouds, we're building applications so fast and we, we use all these different uh, differentiating capabilities of the clouds. Uh, but then what happens if you want to deploy a single policy, a single security policy or configuration policy uh, across all these environments? You, you need a management a service that allows you to do that. But, my question for you, you know, what are the challenges that you see in, in, in customers uh, that, that you're talking to every day? Right, so speaking of Kubernetes, um, one of the biggest problems is just the learning curve of uh, adapting to Kubernetes. Um, and, you know, a lot of times in organizations we see one or two teams uh, getting fully on board with it, but you really aren't going to get the the benefits of the portability unless the whole organization is on board with this sort of new operating model. I'll also say that one of the key roadblocks for uh, modernizing cloud environments is organizational resistance. So many organizations have grown up around uh, certain IT structures um, with silos and so on and actually you know the great thing about a platform that is sort of addressing this holistically is that it can it can help break down those silos and it can actually be a change agent for the organization itself. The thing about Kubernetes is not just changing the way people and developers build applications, but it's changing the whole way that applications get deployed, right? It was invented by actually a person that now works with VMware um, to abstract that um, you know, the, the complexity of how you scale an application, a service-oriented application to millions of users uh, from the developers and enable uh, the operation people to like, you know, configure the environment to scale. Uh, and so people adopting Kubernetes is not just about learning the, the environment, it's about uh, breaking those silos so that dev and ops work together and embrace the DevOps revolution that every company is going through right now. Thank you so much for coming and telling us about how you're seeing the market. Um, it's been great to have you. Uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about multi-cloud. Uh, we see multi-cloud as the third leg of VMware illustrious history. We started with the hypervisor and virtualization, then we uh, went to the software-defined data center, and now we see cross-cloud services as the solution for the multi-cloud architecture that is going to be for us for the next foreseeable future. And of course, if you want to learn more about the enterprise IT market and trends happening there, please visit 451research.com.